somebody wanted me to do a video on hell versus the annihilation. Now, if you didn't know, if you look on YouTube here, there'd be some channels that would teach annihilation. Um, I don't really know how to spell it too well, but if you look, you'll see people teach it. Now, I didn't know there'd be a movie. Now, Hollywood movie promotes certain satanic agendas. Um, you know, unfortunately, um, Natalie Portman was a child actress that was in Hollywood. Don't let your children go to Hollywood because of the uh, possibility, the large possibility of them being abused. Now, it's the same director of Ex Mechanica where they want people to merge with machines. But the truth is you were made in God's image. So you were made in God's image. For people that have been taught evolution, they're going to think merging with machines is some kind of evolution when it's actually, if you become more like a robot, you're becoming less human. So I haven't seen this movie. It's rated R. So if you think you should watch it to learn something as far as um, certain things, just avoid it. It's rated R. Avoid PG-13 movies. So I thought if I type Annihilation, you'd get something. But how YouTube is set up now, um, unfortunately, you can't really find stuff like you used to be able to. So if you check Seventh-day Adventist, <clears throat> same with the Jehovah Witnesses, they teach, sorry, they teach annihilation. Now, Seventh-day Adventist, they're not always going to say on YouTube who is Seventh-day Adventist. And, um, you know, they believe in different things about hell um, as far as that goes. And it's not really worth even mentioning. But in some way, they believe in annihilation to a degree. Now, what does the Bible say? Well, I'm going to tell you that the Bible says hell is everlasting. The Bible says ever, everlasting fire, um, everlasting torment. It says where their worm, their worm dieth not. So you have everlasting fire, everlasting torment, where their worm dieth not. So it's everlasting. So what the Bible, or what some would say, a false religion Bible says false teachers that bring in damnable heresy um, in some ways people could not fear God like they should because they've been told a lie through maybe Seventh-day Adventist a book or something like Mormonism and they don't fear God as they should now if you preach that hell is everlasting there's more of a chance that a person turns to God out of fear. And the Bible does talk about fearing God. It's throughout the Bible. So some people um, will say that it just means, means reverence. But a lot of times the context of the fearing God means just like what it says, fearing God. And the reason is because it keeps you out of sin and it talks about fearing God is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge. So you fear God because if you've been a Christian and been born again, and you realize that you deserve hell and God can send you to hell. So you fear the one, like the Bible says, that can send your body and destroy body and soul. So your soul and your body destroyed in hell. Now someone might say, well, see... It says destroyed, so that means somehow that it's not going to exist. But just because it says destroyed doesn't mean that it ceases to exist as far as that. And you have a soul, and Bible created you in God's image. And part of that is you're going to either be in heaven or in hell forever. So I'm going to show you the Bible verses so you see. Um... So someone might see destroyed, so that's why I covered Psalm 9.5. Thou hast rebuked the heathen, thou hast destroyed the wicked, thou hast put out their name forever and ever. 
So someone might see that and say, well, see, it says destroyed and you put out their name forever and ever. It's just saying that the wicked aren't going to be around. They're going to be destroyed. You're going to forget about their name. People sometimes want to make a name for themselves. But the Bible says those wicked workers of iniquity, their name is going to rot. That you're going to forget about them. In Psalm 37, 38, But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. So that expectation of the wicked is that it's going to be cut off, that they're going to be destroyed, that people that transgress, um, either, either you know the people that had a covenant with God and tr transgress, if they don't come back, those people and the people that you know, never came to God at all, in a sense they're transgressing by you know, their actions and their sins and their expectation is going to be cut off. So they're not going to be, the Bible says, among the righteous. They're not going to stand in the congregation. They're not going to be here on earth. Um, they're going to be in hell. And there's times where um, the Bible says that. And it also says for some people, there's time to repent. So if you're listening to this and maybe you never came to Christ and this is convicting you, realizing that you need to be saved from your sin and you're willing to obey Jesus Christ and have him as your savior, then this message is for you. So when the wicked spring out as the grass, and when all the workers of iniquity do flourish, it is that they shall be destroyed forever. So someone again might see that verse and say, well, see, they're destroyed forever. You have to read your Bible for yourself because if you follow some teachers, sometimes it can be on purpose and sometimes neglect, but a lot of times it's on purpose where they will leave out certain verses maybe to prove certain things. And sometimes they could have good good intentions, but they're still wrong. So if someone just gave you these verses and you might think, well, see, they're destroyed forever. But that's why it's important to know the other verses. Just like example I saw before Matthew twenty five forty one. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Now, I've seen people before with that verse say, Well, see, we're not even going to hell. It's just prepared for his angels and his, and the devil. But that's not true. That part is true. But it, the part that isn't true with that, if people say, Oh, humans don't go there. Because if you know the parable of the rich man and Lazarus, the rich man went where? Well, he went to hell. Then some people will say, well, that's just a parable. It's just a story. The point here is people want to write off hell because it seems like too severe for them or they don't want to think. I mean, most of us here, I'm just speaking for people in the United States, but we could speak elsewhere. Probably had some cousin relation that wasn't a Christian or they were a Christian and stopped becoming a Christian. So at some point, we know people that either went to hell or are in hell right now, as far as, I mean, went to hell after they died. Now, the thing is, there is a judgment coming. So there's a future judgment. And the Bible says, as far as um, sometimes sin will go before, openly before a person where you um, kind of know where they're going to go, right? Uh, but there's some times where you don't really know either, where you're not really sure. So there's, you know, if you're not really sure, the Bible says there's a judgment and God's going to be the judge. But there's people in hell right now. There's people dying right now as I'm doing this video that are going to hell as I speak. And I forget how many people die per day. But if you ever look it up, it's a large number where, you know, every time I look at it, I'm surprised. And I can't really remember the number. But, you know, basically a lot of people are dying right now. So some people will take this and say, well, see, it's only for the angels and the devil. Well, if you read the rest of the Bible, you know, it talks about hell. Some people say, well, it never says hell in the Old Testament. Yeah, it does. So you got to be really careful who you're listening to. And a lot of times people watch videos or maybe perhaps in church and they hear some preaching. And if they're not reading the Bible for themselves, they might think something like, oh, hell's not forever, but it is. And that's why I'm doing this video. Maybe I can reach someone that maybe learned this on YouTube or maybe 
hopefully a Seventh-day Adventist or a Mormon or someone, if they don't believe in hell, I'm hoping this video shows them that, yeah, hell is everlasting. So this is why, Matthew 18, verse 8, and this is Jesus talking in the Bible, Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life halt or maimed, maimed rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. So you see everlasting. So some people want to say, well, the fire is everlasting, but the people there aren't everlasting somehow. But I'm going to show you a verse later where it proves that the people there are going to be everlasting too. And um, again, why would the warning be so severe if it wasn't everlasting? So there's different ways to, you know, God gave us a mind to think about these things. So he's saying about cutting your hand and your foot off to enter into life um, rather than being in hell. And he says it's everlasting fire. So that's the point that it's everlasting. You're not going to get out of hell. So if your hand causes you to sin, it would be better to cut it off and then enter into life rather than a person that doesn't repent or a person that um, keeps on sinning because then they're going to face God's judgment. And if God judges you to hell, that's everlasting fire. And, you know, think about fire being hot and burning. Matthew 29, if, and if thy right hand offend thee, so now it's talking about the eye, and it says, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. So here you see the same thing being said. Um, so Jesus repeats it. So you really want to pay attention when Jesus repeats it. And how I said too about fearing God. And these are the verses that need to be preached. Some churches don't want to preach about hell. Some preach, churches don't want to preach against sin. But it's, it's part of the gospel. It really is. Because, you know, that God's a holy judge. So you can also preach about his holiness. You can should be preaching about his mercy, his forgiveness, his love, and those things. But um, in today's church, at least here in the United States, they preach more about those things, and then they leave out preaching against sin and hell. And one reason why I preach about it as much as I do, because I know I'm on YouTube, so I don't know who's really watching this. It might be some people that are just not Christians that are kind of curious about these things. They haven't been to church. It could be some people that, you know, too. It could be some people that consider themselves Christian, but they don't really care about these things because their church that they go to doesn't preach about it. So those are the kind of reasons why I kind of focus more. Um, I'm on YouTube, and it's not like I'm in church um, teaching. So I'm trying to reach the lost and warn them about these things. So if you go on here at Isaiah 33, 14, here's an example. There's other examples like in Psalms and different places of Isaiah. And I could even take you to the um, um, f first five books of the Bible as far as those um, that talk about hell too. But here in Isaiah 33, 14, the sinners in Zion are afraid. Fearfulness hath surprised the hypocrites. Who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who, who among us shall dwell with everlasting burnings? So some people, and again, it could be just a Christian that's sincere, but I think they're teaching wrong on this one. They'll say, well, it's not really talking about hell. It's talking about, um, they'll say, because the Holy Spirit is described as fire. They'll say, well, see, um, since it's talking about Zion, it's just saying that the sinner's, and this and that, and it's going to talk about the Holy Spirit dwelling amongst the saints. But I really think this is talking about um, hell, because it talks about everlasting burnings. And then before that, it talks about sinners. So, you know, um, sinners go to hell, and it's true that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. 
So we all have sinned and come short. So we all need a Savior, and that's Jesus. He's the only one who did not sin. But the Bible describes, you know, in a lot of places, as saints going to heaven and sinners going to hell. So I think this one is, you know, about sinners going to hell, and it says everlasting burnings. Um, you know, and it's really interesting, too, here, if you realize it, that, you know, it's talking about in Zion. So, and then, you know, you know, you think, wow, they're in Zion, and, you know, they're not, you know, sometimes someone might think, I know when I was young, that, you know, like all of Israel are, you know, Bible believers, but it's not the case right now. Same same thing, like in the church, you know, maybe someone would think, Someone thinks, oh, they must be all going to heaven, all believers in church. But that's not the case in the church. Sometimes there's backsliders. There's sometimes people that aren't really believers, but they're just going to church uh, for whatever reason. And then also there's hypocrites. So you could have, you know, you do sometimes have hypocrites in church, just like you had hypocrites in the Old Testament with Israel and um, even in Zion. So um, I think what this verse is talking about is that you know, those hypocrites, those sinners, you know, the fear of God fell on them because they're going to face judgment. And the everlasting fire, devouring fire is hell. So here in Matthew 10, 28, it says, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. So the fear of God, again, it needs to be preached. It's part of the gospel. Um, it talks about those that fear God and think about his name are written in the book of remembrance. So it's part of the gospel. Some people want to um, kind of, you know, minimize the gospel, but it's important to preach about holiness, fear of God, judgment, righteousness, heaven, hell, mercy, God. You know, the only way is through God. You know, as far as our own self-righteousness is filthy rags, but... You should, you know, part of the gospel is to obey God and turn from sin and obey God. So repentance and um, and, and truth, you can talk about truth. So those things need to be said. And um, uh, Matthew 9, I'm sorry, Mark 9, 41. For whosoever shall give you a cup of water to drink in my name, because ye belong to Christ, verily I say unto you, he shall not lose his reward. And whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, it is better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he were cast into the sea. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go to hell into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thy eye offend thee, pluck it out. And it is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. So, um, you see there, it's talking about everlasting fire. And if you're honest about it, you can tell because it says their worm dieth not. So a lot of times, if you didn't know, a worm might feed on someone's, um, dead corpse, their body. So it's saying in hell, their worm dieth not that, um, some people think, you know, this will be like a literal, literal worm. So like they actually, and that, you know, if they want to teach that, I think, um, that'd probably be fine, you know, but, you know, I'm not sure. But I do know that it's comparing a worm that, you know, eats a carcass or someone's dead body, and it's saying that hell is everlasting because it says the worm dieth not. And um, before that, it talks about offending children. So, you know, for children that believe in Christ, you want to make sure you're doing everything. Um, sometimes this gets talked about as some kind of um, sexual abuse, and, you know, I think you could apply to that. To children, but also think about you know people that turn children away from Christ in other ways. It could be false teaching, or um, some other things. If you think about it, so I wouldn't I wouldn't just apply that to just um, you know physical sexual abuse, but I'd apply it to um, you know putting children off the right path. It could be 
you know, putting stuff in front of them that leads them off the right path, you know, and there's people that actually want to do that. I know um, for probably most of the people listening, they probably might not do that, but there's some people that, you know, get pleasure in doing evil and they would want to um, go after the children and mess them up on purpose. So, but it's not worth it because, you know, if you, the millstone it was some heavy stone and, you know, if you put that heavy stone and put it around your neck and you went into the sea and drowned, you know, you're dead. And But it, it says that would be better. So um, you definitely don't want to offend children in a way that would take them away from believing in Christ. You know, it talked about the children believing in Christ and someone that offends them. So you want to make sure you don't do that. So... And I had um, Gil's commentary so um, on there, but you can read it if you want. I, uh, I'd say with his commentary, just caution. There's sometimes when it's really good and sometimes that it's um, not. But in this case, I just included it for some of those things that he added to this. But I probably won't read it. But if you want to read it, I'm kind of going through it here. And you can pause it and read it as you go on. So, um, you know, so there's example again about, you know, Mark. So Jesus is talking about it um, here again throughout the New Testament. You know, before, oh, it's in Mark 941. And I just put it again, I guess. But here's Mark again. Um, but here in Matthew 22, 23, the same day came to him the Sadducees, which say that there is no resurrection, and asked him. And so the Sadducees didn't believe in a resurrection, but there is a resurrection. So the Bible says in John five twenty nine, and shall come forth, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the re resurrection of damnation. So it's very important here because there is a popular ministry on YouTube right now, probably one of the most on YouTube as far as evangelism. And, you know, I have some of their Bible tracts and they say, you know, do you have to be a good person to go to heaven? Well, the answer there is that, you know, Jesus was the good one that we need to be saved. But the reason why I don't really like that track because... Here you see those that have done good are going to the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the re resurrection of damnation. And there's a lot of people that think, well, I don't have to do anything, but the Bible says you're going to be judged by your works. And here in this case, those that did good went to the resurrection. Now, I'm not saying by our good works we warrant salvation and we're not saved by our good works. Again, it's only through Jesus Christ and his death, bur burial, and resurrection that we're, we are saved. Once again, it's only through Jesus and his shedding of his blood that we're saved. Only Jesus could have done that. Only Jesus didn't sin. Only Jesus is holy. Only Jesus is perfect and did not sin. And only through believing on his name are you saved. The Bible says you must be born again of the Spirit. So you ask God for forgiveness and you call upon the name of Jesus Christ to save you. And he's willing to save you. So he's the one that has to do the saving, okay? So you just can't claim, I, I just decide to be a Christian on my own power. You're not born into God's family through natural blood. So it's not by the flesh too, the Bible says. So, you know, the flesh wars against the spirit. So it's only Jesus, um, you know, chooses who he's going to save. But that being said, you, the Bible says you call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead and thou shalt be saved. So it's by God's grace through faith are we saved. And the Bible makes it clear it's not of works. But to make a track and maybe it's reaching millions of people, to say, do you have to be a good person to go to heaven? And if you say no to that, well, then the Bible says those that have done good, okay? So, you you know, the people that are doing wicked and sinning, those unrepentant people, if they claim to have Jesus, Jesus as their Savior, their own works are going to deny them on Judgment Day. So it's a really big deal for that track to do that because, again, I'm, I know the Bible says that if we present our own works as justification for salvation, 
In other words, if we went before God and said, oh, I'm going to go to heaven, just look how good I am. That's not going to work because the Bible says there's not, there's none good, not one. So for justification, if you present yourself as, I'm just a good person and I'm going to heaven because of that, that's not going to work, okay? The Bible says all must repent. So turning from your sin, turning to God, willing to forsake your sin to receive Jesus Christ in your heart and follow him. The Bible says you must be born again. So for that track to say, well, you don't have to do anything good and you're going to make it to heaven, basically, that's wrong because a lot of people aren't doing good and they're just claiming Jesus and they're workers of iniquity. What the Bible says that um, on Judgment Day, there's going to be people that think they're going to heaven, but the Bible says God's going to say on Judgment Day, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So again, hopefully you can, for those that have eyes to see and ears to hear, and shall come forth, they that have done good, unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil, unto the resurrection of damnation. So you see that there's a resurrection. And the Sadducees in Jesus' time, now these are the religious um, group, they didn't believe in a resurrection, the Pharisees did. But Jesus told them that there is a resurrection. And there's other verses he gave them, he says, I'm the God of the living. He talked about, you know, I think... Um, Abraham there, but you might want to look that up. But he says, I'm the God of, you know, when he, he oh, maybe when he meant, uh, I mean, uh, when he meant Moses and the bush, you know, he's the God of the, he's the God of the living. So I can't remember if he referred back to the uh, bush, uh, burning bush, bush, you know, if you're familiar with the burning bush, um, when he meant uh, Moses. Um, otherwise, maybe even, well, you could use the example of Abraham too. So I can't remember which one he used, but, you know, if you think about Abraham, he promised that his seed would go on living forever and he'd be the father of many nations. So he's saying he's the God of the living. So he proved there and, you know, it talks about the resurrection of damnation. And then in Acts twenty four fifteen, And have hope toward God, which they themselves also allow. So I'll say that one more time. And have hope toward God, which they themselves also allow, that there shall be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and unjust. And 1 Corinthians fifteen twelve. Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? So even Paul in his letter to Corinthians, some people were preaching, teaching that there is no resurrection. And Paul said, well, then your faith is in vain because without the resurrection, there would be no hope. You have the resurrection, Jesus raising us from the dead, um, both spiritually and physically. So back in Paul's day, where he was preaching to Christians, setting up churches, some people would then go to the converted Christians and try to seduce them and say, oh, there is no resurrection. But Paul said, well, if there's no resurrection of Christ, then we'd be all, I'm just putting in my own words, we'd all be doomed. Because if Jesus didn't rise, we know he did rise from the dead. But if, if he didn't, then there would be no saving gospel. Because all have sinned and come short. Through Jesus dying, shedding his blood, we have the remission of sins, the forgiveness of sins. And through his resurrection, his body resurrection, he rose bodily. And his spirit, and you know, he was you know, the same person that died, same person rose from the dead, including his body. Through that we have, for us Christians, a lively hope that one day we're going to be resurrected and live with Christ for eternity with other brothers and sisters in Christ. And we're saved from the penalty of sin, which is death, the second death, both you know physically and spiritually death, separation from God in hell as far as not being part of eternal life here with Jesus. If those people um, don't repent and are judged by God to go to hell, that's going to be forever. And this video, my hope again was to clear that up because, you know, there's a lot of Seventh Day Adventists on YouTube, Mormons, and people see those videos and they might just give them a couple of verses like about being destroyed, and they get taught that or they get taught the rich man. That's just a parable. It didn't know what the Bible does say. Where where there worm dieth not everlasting fire torment gnashing of teeth, and that's why. Jesus, when he was teaching, was saying it's better if you cut off your right hand and to enter into the life. And if you don't, otherwise, if you don't cut your right hand off and you just keep on sinning and go to hell, 
then that's everlasting. So he's saying, you know, do what you need to do to turn from sin, even if it's cutting off your hand, to getting into life everlasting. So I like to say too, let's say you have to get away from your family or your friends or, um, you know, your religion. Some, you know, religion's good, but if you're in a false religion like Mormonism, you know, leave. Or if your workplace is causing you to sin, leave. Um, you know, friends, leave your friends. The Bible says, forsake all to follow Christ. Take up your cross daily, denying yourself. So that's part of the gospel too, doing what it takes to follow Jesus. And, you know, if you're in a false religion like Mormonism, you need to get out. So the Bible here is talking about cutting your hand off. So leaving Mormonism would be included in that because the teachings go against the Bible. And I use that example, Mormonism, but I could use other uh, religions too. You got to do what the Bible says. The word of God is what um, you follow. So sometimes these religions add to the book. They create their own books, whether it's catechism or the Book of Mormon or Ellen G. White or something like that. Secret degrees, secret um, teachings. They add to the word of God or sometimes they take away from the word of God by what they teach. They'll say, oh, this isn't really true. Like hell's not everlasting when the Bible says it is. So again, the Bible says, let God be true. Yea, yea, let God be true and every man a liar. So you're not supposed to follow man and his teachings. You follow the word of God. You follow the teachings of Christ. Become his disciple. Be baptized and follow him. And make other disciples um, once you've been a mature Christian. So the Bible says don't add or, don't add or remove from the word of God. So those people that add or remove from the word of God. I gave you the examples of like Jehovah Witnesses um, denying certain things of the faith. Mormonisms having their own book where they're adding catechism where they're adding there so the reason why um god punish punish those with hell unless they repent because the bible talks about damnable heresies so heresy would be like a false teaching where people are adding or removing something from the bible and then by teaching that if people have practiced and follow that teaching it leads people to hell because um, they're going against the gospel, they're going against the word of God, they're being disobedient, um, you know, maybe they never come to Christ, or maybe they leave Christ through those teachings. Remember the verse I shared where um, offending one of those children that believed in Christ, it would be better if a millstone were hanging around their neck and they were tossed into, thrown into the sea. And the reason why that warning is there, because you have a child that, you know, to come to Christ, you must be converted and become like a child. So children um, have a more natural tendency to um, receive Christ for reasons, and you must become a child, and such is the kingdom of God to be a child. And if you have a child that you know believes in God, and then someone through, again, it could be different things like false teachings or other things, um, takes them away from Christ, it says it's better if a millstone is hanging around their neck and they'd be tossed into the sea. So that's a strong warning there. So that shows you that, you know, people that add, remove to the word of God and get people away from God, you know, their punishment is hell unless they repent. And God gives some time, a lot of times for, you know, he gives time to repent. You know, the Bible talks about he's not willing any should perish, but all come to repentance. And in the book of Revelation, he says to them, I, you know, I, about uh, Jezebel and the um, Revelation, if I have this right, but look it up for yourself because, you know, I'm not, sometimes I might say something that might, have a, have it a little bit wrong, but he they gave God gave, but with hell you know I know it's everlasting, but you know in the Book of Revelation sometimes I get like maybe names wrong like it said before Abraham Moses that was giving the story about um God is the God of living he's the living God in this case with the Reve revelation you know he gave time to repent space space to repent so God you know in his loving um or merciful long suffering way. Uh, he wants people to repent, so he gives some time for them to, you know, turn. But if a person is stubborn and stiff-necked, stiff neck, the Bible says, um, you know, prideful, hypocrites, something like that, where they decide, I'm not going to repent, God gives them so much time and then um, 
gives them up to their own ways, to their own works, to their own destruction, which some of those Bible verses in the beginning we talked about um, as far as the wicked, the hypocrites, transgressors shall be destroyed. They should be cut off forever. Their name's going to be cut off. You're not going to remember them. And the Bible does say, though, that they're going to, how do we know? Because they said that it's everlasting fire. Their worm will die not. So Jesus said their worm will die, die not. It says it's everlasting. Um, you know, and it only makes sense because you got a, um, you know, made in God's image. You're a living soul through the breath of God. And then two, the warning God gave about cutting your hand off. The reason he gave such a severe warning is because of hell everlasting. So, and the Bible, I didn't include this verse, but the torment of their smoke, when it talks about, I think, the false prophet and the beast and that, where their torment of their smoke goes up forever and ever. And Seventh-day Adventists will try to say, oh, that's just the smoke that goes up forever, ever. But the there's everlasting fire. The smoke is forever. The worm is forever. So it's talking about forever, guys, as far as everlasting. And it talks about everlasting destruction. So you have all these warnings about everlasting. You have hell in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, there's a lot of warnings. Jesus preached a lot about hell. Um, people say that he preached more about hell than anyone. So I know some people's ministries, like Jeremiah was longer as far as him being on the earth longer. And we don't always know like all their sermons. But the point is Jesus preached about hell and he warned that it's everlasting and he wants you to repent. So if you're one of these teachers, maybe in one of these churches that's teaching that hell is not everlasting, you need to repent. So I hope this video has helped someone. And again, if you haven't come to Christ, he wants you to be humble and receive him as a child and confess the, the Lord Jesus and um, have him as your savior to save you from sin. So you turn in your heart from sin and you've been convicted of your sin. Um, and want to turn to Jesus Christ. So he's made you and and you need to follow him and you should want to follow him because he made you, right? And he gave you all these blessings as far as you could look at, you know, people sometimes look at material blessings like a house, a car, but also family. And you could look at, um, you know, the talents he gave you as far as um, those things and just life in general, you should be thankful for him giving you and making you. So you should be thankful and wanting to follow him because, you know, um, you should naturally um, want to please and have, um, for those people that maybe never had a father um, from a broken home, you know, he's promising you that through his son, the father sent his son and died for your sins, you can have a relationship through the son to the father. So if you never had a father, you can have a father. So there's a lot of good news in the gospel for those people that are the fatherless. They can have a father now. If they didn't ever have a family, they can have a family. If they never had brothers and sisters, they can have brothers and sisters. But it does come as a cost because sometimes you lose family, people that, you know, your um, biological family, they, they will turn on you sometimes and you could lose, you could be kicked out of your house, you could be kicked out um, of a marriage, um, but it's all worth it. But the Bible does talk about counting the cost. So I, I want you to know that. So following Christ, there comes a cost. And that's why it says to lose your life so that you can gain life. You give up your life, whether it could be your job, your family, or your personal will that you want to do to do God's will. And the cost is, well, persecution is going to come doesn't always get preached enough, but, you know, if you live in a godly life in Jesus Christ, the Bible says expect persecution to come. And this could be from workers, family members, strangers, when you're trying to share about Jesus and his love, the Father's love that he sent his only begotten Son. And some people don't like it because it says it's a stumbling block of, of offense. So some people take offense to it that, they can't save themselves. A lot of people want to save themselves because they want to say, hey, look at me and look what I did. But that's offensive to people that they that you say, well, you're not a good person. You can't save yourself. And even if you did a thousand good works, that's not going to save you. It's only the blood of Jesus and having faith in him. Jesus is the savior. Only Jesus is the righteous one 
and he, he can only, you know, be the Holy One as far as um, saving you. So God still wants you to be holy. He requires it. Without holiness, no man shall see God. But the point is that Jesus is the only one to the Father. So you have to believe and follow Jesus. And some people don't like that. They want to think that all religions lead to heaven or they want to think that their good works will lead to the heaven or something like that. But that's not the case. So the Bible talks about worshiping God in the spirit and in truth. So if we leave out the truth part, then it's just a lie. And we know that Satan's the father of lies and um, a deceiver. And a lot of people are deceived. And God is, Jesus Christ said he is the way, the truth, and the life. So either you die and you're dead or you have life. And only life is through Jesus Christ. And again, a lot of people want to say they're truthers or for the truth. But if they don't have Jesus Christ, they don't have the truth. So a lot of people, again, say they're truthers or care about the truth. But if they don't have Jesus Christ, then they don't care about the truth. And the Bible says they are an antichrist, meaning they're against Christ. They don't have Christ that, um, you know, they're gonna, if people are going to be against Christ, then they're against the gospel. And um, they either backslidden or they never were a Christian to begin with. They never were saved. So if you're backslidden, you need to repent and turn back to God. So there's the story of the prodigal son. He went away from the father and then realized he came to an end of himself and realized, hey, this is not worth it. I had it better at home with my father. And he, he turned from his living and went back to the father. And the father received him and ran to him and met him and hugged him and loved him and even killed a calf for him. And he said, my son is dead, but now is alive. So if you're there that maybe you left the faith for a while and you're called back now through this video, through the preaching of the word and realize that the things that this life has to offer, the carnal stuff, is not going to be worth it and it brings um, sin brings death and misery. And you realize, well, that wasn't worth it. I want to come back. So the Lord wants you to come back. So maybe the Lord's calling you to come back to, to Jesus and um, maybe you didn't fall away completely anymore and if you still have these ears to hear and hear this message and it being convincing to you, you know, I'd say come back to God and, you know, leave that lifestyle of sin and come back to God. And just like the prodigal son, he's willing to receive you again. And the Bible said, we're all like sheep that gone astray. So there's times when sheep go astray and Jesus comes back after you. So um, he's willing to forgive you. So come back to the father. So come back to Jesus and the father can forgive you. So be willing to come back and we there's um the bible says there's more joy in heaven when one sinner repented so when one sinner repents there's joy in heaven more than um 99 people that are righteous that don't need repentance so there's a you know joy in heaven if a sinner repents and comes back to the lord and or comes back maybe they never were a christian but again you're born in the image of god but through Adam, we have sin and Eve because they disobeyed God. So we have this um, sin nature. And I have a video on the channel. You can check it out. But the Lord wants you to come back and come back to Jesus. And get, And um, if you never were a Christian, he wants you to become a Christian and follow Christ. So, you know, confess Jesus and be willing to um, follow him and call out for help. And Jesus is the only name that can save you. And he's willing to save sinners. That's the good news that he didn't come into the world to he didn't come into the world to condemn the world, but he came to save you. He came to save you. So when we were yet sinners for us, um, before we were Christians, when we were yet sinners, Christ came to save us. And again, he's not willing any should perish, but all come to repentance. And that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So it talks about, that and not being ashamed to call upon his name so my hope is that through this video you realize that you deserve hell and um, if you're a christian there you realize that at one point um you know if, if it wasn't for god's mercy that you would deserve hell because all of sin and come short of the glory of god and jesus needed to die for our sins so my hope is that you realize this and if you're not a christian to turn to jesus and be willing to follow him and do whatever he commands and have him rule over you and, you know, worship him in fear and in truth and in the spirit. So that's my hope for this video and hope this video cleared up some things about hell. And again, um, people teach that 
hell is not everlasting. Well, um, whatever their intentions are, they're still false teaching. And the Bible is clear that it's everlasting fire. So, um, you know, God's not willing any to go there. But since he's holy, he sends people there. Some people didn't repent. Some people didn't obey. And um, it's through God's mercy. He chooses, you know, for people. He chooses some people to be saved. And, and he wants everyone to be saved. So he wants you to come to him. And um, it's through his mercy that we're saved. And he's long suffering again. So he gives some space for people to repent. But don't take the long suffering of God and use it to keep on sinning. Because the Bible says today is the day of salvation. So today's the day of salvation. He doesn't want you to say, oh, I got time because you could die. Or God may say, okay, you were stubborn and rebellious. I'm cutting you off and he might give you up to your own sin. You don't want that. So you want to repent today. And, you know, when witnessing, I heard two people say, well, I'll, I'll, I'll come later. And a lot of these people say they believe in Christ, but they don't want to forsake their sin. So they'll say, well, you know, basically they say, I believe in Jesus, but I don't want to live for him yet until I'm older or, you know, they want to keep their sin. And the Bible says sin is pleasurable. It's pleasurable for a season, but we know the wages of sin bring death. So I just admonishing, admonishing you and telling you that, you know, it might seem like, you know, short term that, um, but it's not worth it. And Sometimes sin, people want to get out of it, but it brings sometimes um, chains where people are brought into bondage. But Christ can set you free. So if you never came to Christ, he can set you free. And if you're a backslider, again, the Bible says, cut off your hand if it keeps you from sinning and to keep you from hell. So do what it takes. You know, if it if you have to get rid of the computer, if you have to get rid of your cell phone, if you have to you know, leave for a while from your get a new job or, you know, whatever it takes, you know, if you're either a backslider or never came to Christ, do what it takes. Okay. And I can't, I really want to stress that because um, so many times people think, well, I can, I can still do and live how I am. And eventually I'll get away from the sin. And uh, a lot of times that doesn't happen because you're around the same people, the same things, whether it be the computer or job. And, it can be really hard sometimes um, to get away from these things when you're in sin for a while. So you need to do what it takes before, you know, you, some people, you know, plan on, just like that guy I talked about earlier, he planned on one day getting from sin, but he thought he could just live his life the same kind of way and then some point later in his life get away from sin, and I don't think he ever did. So take that as a lesson for you to learn from it. Do it today. So I really hope this video has helped someone. And, you know, God gets the glory, not me. And I'm just thankful that I've been able to do this video and hopefully praise the Lord in um, that way as far as doing this for him and trying to warn others. And, you know, again, we should be thanking and praising God for making us and for his um, love and his, you know, that he gave us and, and all those things. So... Um, you know, thanks for the watching and, you know, again, go to the Lord in prayer and call upon his name and um, seek Christ so that he can be found. So thanks for watching and God bless.